From an early age, David was encouraged to sample the outdoors, regularly visiting Torquay for holidays with his family. It was during a video showing at a theme park one afternoon when he became hooked on a Japanese cartoon. David grew up in the firm belief that he was Marine Boy. However, by the age of 41 and having lost all of his hair through the stress of losing his friend, he decided he had to make a change. The final straw was seeing video footage of himself following a Christmas party in 2008. Yeah, it was, uh, it was our Jacko just sent me a cup of some tea and um, I'd been for my first swim, only managed like four lengths and I was just totally panicked, couldn't, uh, couldn't get my breath, couldn't get any, um, any stamina going so I just realised how absolutely unfit I was. But Jack, bless me, he was sitting there and he said, uh, how many lengths is that dad ever pool for a mile? I said, well it's 64. And you could see his little mind working away there as it does. And uh, he said, well, Dad, you could have sort of swam the lake district and back by the time, you know, you do the swim. So that was it. The die was cast and it was uh, the lake district and back. mile swim for charity starts here and uh, this evening we're going to see Alan Robson and Night Owls to talk about uh, mental health and how the 300 mile swim supports the mental health in the North East. informed about somebody who is a bit of a superhero he's a lad from Jarrow and he's swimming the equivalent of the Lake District <laughs> swimming all of it what's this all about let's find out from the man himself and I believe that is Dave Yo. hi Dave hi Alan how are you I'm good mate so what's all this um, what are you doing all this for well, basically, um, I'm doing um, the Great North Swim, which is sort of the, the swimmer's version of the Great North Run. They did a little one last year, didn't they? I've had a look on the website on it, and it was uh, there was quite a few entrants last year. Right. Um, I only had a look on it after I'm, uh, my colleague Darren in, in the office in which I work in Sutherland. Yeah. He said, you fancy swimming a mile for charity next year, Dave? And that's what I thought. Yep, no problem. And then he finished the sentence over, it's in Lake Wind in me, and I thought, oh, God, I've done it now. I've said, yes, I'm going to do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking to my son and my friend uh, in the kitchen the other week and my, my son Jack said, Dad, you know what it is? You, you could have swam to the Lake District and back by the time you finish your training. Right. So that, that's become the aim, really, Alan, to swim the equivalent of the Lake District and back before September. <laughs> the, main, the main sort of sort of the, the push for me as well is I'm, I'm doing the swim for uh, for mine, the mental health charity. Why did you pick that one? Um, yeah, well, I had a, I had a friend um, who, who sadly passed away in 2006 who suffered from bipolar. Right. And um, 
it was very, very difficult to come to terms with losing my colleague. Um, I worked with him every day for, I think, about 10 years. Literally, we sat a couple of feet apart from each other. Um, that um, that was that like, had a massive impact, as I say, on me, and it, and it it did take a toll on me mentally, uh, certainly um, mood-wise, at least as you'd expect, Alan, from losing such a close friend for for a good few years. I mean, the first six months were horrendous, and. I think I, at the time, if, if, if I could have talked to someone, and, and, and I was encouraged to seek counselling, which I never really did, yeah. but I think if I had, um, it would have been a, a great benefit to me. Definitely. I mean, that, 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 you know, that, that's sort of irrelevant in the whole scheme of things. I mean, well, it is, it is what it isn't, because other people are probably exactly where you were then now. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, think, yeah. I think there's one thing about losing someone when you know they, they're old, or you know they've got a, a health problem. When somebody just takes their own life and suddenly they're not there anymore, that, that really hits your heart. Yeah, we knew we had a condition, but the, obviously to, to take things to the extremes of, of whatever. No, you never um, expect it. You, you don't expect it, but um, as I say, if, if I can put something in to um, in, in the mind and the mental health charity this year and, and in the coming years, that, that's, that's my overall goal, goal, you know. Well, good luck with that. It sounds fantastic. We're going to be following you every step of the way, Dave. So Thanks very much, Alan. Thanks, Thank Dave. Good talking to you. What a lovely fella. I sound like a complete. Have you got 10 minutes? You didn't tell me about the documentary? Was I doing the posh Geordie accent? Hi. Well, you were the same ing at the end of your words and that. We're off to uh, pick the wet up today uh, for the swim. First one in Kielder and the next one in Windermere. Uh, we've been hoping for a swim this morning to keep fit. Uh, my dad sponsored the, the actual purchase of the wetsuit. Very good of him. And who's it, who's it to mascots? This is Isabel. Um, she's uh, just learning to swim with Jack. He's uh, like Billy the Fish. It's fantastic. And this is Sunderland Aquatic Centre. Sunderland Aquatic Centre, who wouldn't support any of your training in the swim, which is an interesting fact. So they wouldn't support you, but they will support your purchase of the wetsuit. Well, the company, North East Swimwear Supplies, they're supporting me and they're giving us a discount on the wetsuit, so they're definitely getting some public speed. However, the Aquatic Centre in Sunderland, it's in there. It's a nice building, like, isn't it? Aye, right, wants to be. I'm not giving anyone discount for it, kid. Then ease it up, get it right over your hips before you try and put it over your shoulders. Yeah. It takes just a little bit Swimming. Wild swimming. Come on! 
sponsored by Seabrook's John, the, the swimmer's crisp. The, the crisp of champions. <laughs> it's always worked for me, especially in the back. <laughs> Keep it going, Dave. Could have took the top of your heat off that, mate. <laughs> Nice one, mate. Aye, excellent. I feel a bit, uh, a bit lightheaded. Lightheaded? Aye. Get <laughs> your head warmed up. Hey, you don't realise you've come out. It's mm. good, yeah. Any first day, uh, any just reaction straight straight out the cold? Like drunk. Really? Great man, just getting out isn't it? Eh? The great outdoors. Dave's just saying that he feels like he's in Davy Mack's playground because Davy Mack used to do like deep sea diving and that out off the air uh, off the west coast of Scotland. He used to go right up and used to dive, dive about down there. He's well into that. Bonne air de douche! <laughs> Do you think anybody watching this, like on the subject of mental health, like all the different ways that people have of dealing with, like having their own like acute mental health issues, problems, I mean day to day, people get really pressured in life and Think, like become isolated and blinkered and like the doors in your mind kind of seem to close sometimes and you feel like there's less and less options and no way out and that's kind of it's a path that a lot of people lead and when you think just with that extra little bit of like push to yourself just to get yourself out in the open like this into the outdoors it can uh, transform your life Six, the eight of us kids from where we lived. What year? 1978, maybe. We are all on the boat, and uh, the big wave came from behind, sort of rocked the boat like that, and I flipped off the side, went underneath the boat, um, and it was like literally underneath the boat, looked nothing. Oh, oh dear, I better wait until the boat goes over the top of me. I sort of think it got, got me over any sort of fears of being in the open water when I was a kid. Yeah. Just popped up on the other side, my dad grabbed us like it was a prize tuna. <laughs> Yank us back in the boat. I think the ferry's forty odd pound to Amsterdam. So Dave will save 40 quid. We're at Benny's Pomodoro, which is where I've been doing uh, most of my eating for my, my training. Benny's a top lad and he's going to have a chat with us about uh, what we should be eating really to, to sort of keep fit. Could you have a share? Doing like a lot of swimming training. Yes. I just want to know what I should be eating basically. Before you uh, start training, first thing in the morning, to wake your body up, you've got to have a shot of coffee right. or green tea or a grapefruit to wake your body up. A couple of spoons of brown rice, then you are away, training hard as you want, hard as you can, then come back quick, just a banana or a get banana. Like get your sugar, get, get your sugar, get you out of the starvation. Low carb, high energy, high protein, slow release so energy. Right. It's really, really good for you. So it's important to fill up in the morning as opposed to like, so like one, one main meal in the morning and then... Main meal, but made healthy meal. Yeah. Always mornings, then lunch, then evening, small. 
water. What we say, what we say, have your breakfast by yourself, because you're not shy, eat much as you want. <laughs> have your lunch with your friend, you respect your friend, reduce your portion. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. But night time, have your dinner with your enemy. Why? Because you gotta have the food and have the soul to fight with your enemy. <laughs> you haven't got enough time to eat. Is that right? Okay. Just gonna have a little bit, then fight to save your life. That's the way it works. Big, medium, very small night time. I just want to keep everything healthy because I'm a healthy guy. I train a lot and as you know, the guy been eating here as well. He looks good, healthy and fit. That's the way I love and life is good. You've got to be happy, healthy. Keep yourself slim and be happy. Have a nice sleep. Enjoy yourself and be smiling. God bless you. Enjoy your journey. And I will thank you. Thanks, buddy. God bless. See you down at there. See you down at Crook. See you down at Crook. Come at Lake, Dave. Next Saturday. It's about 100 miles. Ta da, mate. Well, Dave and I have got uh, a little bit too excited and just spent half an hour <laughs> shooting, shooting still photographs instead. It's <laughs> amazing up here, man. Well, we thought we were being clever getting up at 7 o'clock. We've got in here for 7.30. Expecting to do some nice shots in the morning. Dead quiet with nobody here, everybody just waking up. And the entire place is full at 7.30 in the morning. Registration, early morning. The Outdoor Swimming Society. And this is where the race starts. Hi. Hi, okay, it's Dave Young. Hi. 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 How are you doing? How are you doing? Good, I'm not too bad. Yeah. 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 We got the results back last week. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, we haven't published the results yet, but it said, right. it said right. like 83% said that people said to have made them happier and less stressed. Exactly. Uh, and it was like, I think it was 73% said that they actually actively use it. It's a guide of like, you know, mental health and stuff. So we can give you those stats and then we'll oh, that would be great. All shapes and sizes. I would say that that is about 200 metres away, so you're going to have to go around four times to do your mile. Um, 
Yeah. Why is it change? Is that because of the algae? Yes, yeah, because the algae. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Nature. Nature has taken its course. Yeah. Yes. Anna, see you in a bit. Off you go. It's like the March of the Penguins. Hey. It's like the March of the Penguins. Or the seals, perhaps. Scene 45, mate. Somewhere in the middle of that is Dave Young. <laughs> Knows where. Are you? Yeah, Aye. Just jump over here. the sea with his constant companion. Hello. Could you tell us a little bit about um, how your dad started the swim? He started this amazing process of training where he swam a mile a day to, um, to, um, to totaling up to 300 miles which is which is almost superhuman. So what, what, what part have you played in the process of helping your dad or? Well, we've been in, I've been encouraging him to go on camping trips and uh, when we go on these camping trips, it's like obviously a long way away in the Lake District where the Great North Swimmers, we'll go, we usually visit a lake and uh, on our first one we'll visit a lake um, called Crummock 
he did some swimming there and that, I think that was one of his first experiences of the cold water. It came as quite a shock really. I swam, I swam for a bit in there and it was really fun. So, so do you think it's had a positive effect then overall? Definitely, I mean dad, it's had a definite effect on dad's physique because he's definitely more muscly now. <laughs> what, was then, he, what was he before? Um, he was a little, little uh, large, let's see. Tubby. And, um, it, <laughs> tubby. And um, it's also had a good effect on his mind as well because he's doing it for um, his um, friend, work friend who died, unfortunately. And he's doing it for a mental health charity because uh, his friend Dave had a had a um, mental health problem. So um, he's been raising money for mind while he's been doing this, so it's really good. Dave, I mean, for a lot of people, something like this would have, have knocked them absolutely sideways, and it did for you for a, a little while. Tell us how you decided to cope with it. Um, well, I, th I suppose any sudden loss really um, impacts you straight away but for myself it wasn't um it wasn't like an outward release of emotion really at that not sort of consciously but i think i bottled up a lot of the emotion and initially as i think some people do tend to do tend to actually just having a good old drink every night just to try and just bring myself down to just not actually thinking about the situation i was in impressive and i guess part of it for, for you is trying to show people that there is light at the end of the, the tunnel, for want of a better phrase. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the, the 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 move away from the situation I was in to doing something positive and something that has a health benefit. But I think in terms of swimming, um, there's been a lot of research done in the last few years as to the actual mental health benefits for swimming. That phrase inspiration tends to be overused it a little bit, but is that kind of how you feel that you are now to other people, that they can look at you and think, if he can do it, I can do it. There's a way forward. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's. We we'll hope to sort of make make the film available to, to certainly to Mind in Sunderland and anybody else who, who wants a copy of it just to just to show that you know th there is a way out basically. Um, and I suppose looking back retrospectively as well, Julie, this 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 the thing I'm thinking about my friend who died. You know, there was there was another path from um, rather than um, sort of medication really. When I went to the to the doctor, um, when I started to lose my hair and, and I described the situation I was in, one of the first questions I was asked was, are you feeling you may be depressed? And I said, oh yeah, definitely. Well, I can prescribe something. So I said, you're okay. <laughs> I've lost my hair. I'm still here. I'm going to just try and find some other way of dealing with the situation. and sickness meant organisers had to postpone the swim. Are you concerned it was as simple as that the organisers simply just didn't have a plan B in case this happened? Yes, I think that uh, people are asking why there wasn't a contingency uh, plan. And also you're concerned that actually people could have just got in and done the swim in any case, aren't you? Well, people are also asking why they weren't given the choice. So as far as you're concerned, this was an overreaction, wasn't it? I think, yes, I think that the... Um, the problem was uh, exaggerated. Uh, these people got the impression that the whole of Lake Windermere was covered in this blue-green algae. In fact, it only covered a tiny, tiny part of the lake. Oh, anyway, it's looking 
like a beautiful day Someone tell me how I feel It's silly wrong but vivid right Oh, kiss me like a final meal Oh, kiss me like we die tonight Cause holy cow, I love you right Half awake, stumbling over what to say Well anyway, it's looking like a beautiful day So Dave and I discussed um, what we were going to do with the DVD following the, like following the edit and following the film premiere and we decided that the best thing we could do was to try and um, get it as a product in the, the hands of somebody who might be going through a mental health issue and who can use the DVD as a means of like motivating themselves from, from watching the documentary. So we contacted uh, Sunderland Mind and they agreed, um, well, they liked the idea, and we came up with this, um, the name, uh, the Single Step Programme. So it would, the DVD, together with an accompanying piece of paper, would go into the hands of somebody who might be, like somebody new who's just come to, to, to see Mind. Um, and they would then take their first single step towards rehabilitation or um, motivation or whatever they might need in their lives. So using Dave and the DVD as a role model, and we also thought it would be a great legacy for Davy Mack because um, Sunderland's his city, and it would be like something that kind of kind of carries Davy's name on as well. So we're just here at mine now to um, talk to them and meet some of the people in there. I know it's from your outside as well. You've got the drop-in centre as well. It yes. just it seems. I think a lot of the times when it's sort of like through the wider sort of social care network it's a bit difficult for people to approach it whereby mm. yourselves it just seems like you can knock on the door and come and have a chat That's with right. people you know so in the mind when we've been um in some for about 35 years really and what, yeah and wow. what and we actually own the building which is sometimes good and bad mm. um obviously repairs and the overheads is expensive for ourselves yeah. we're a registered charity uh, but what we do is provide advice support information and counseling where we, uh, we can be more flexible and more open and um, less barriers to, to kind of get over. Our service is self-referral open access, 
so only one can come and just walk through the door yeah. at any time really yeah. and whether they're in crisis or whatever the needs are we can kind of yeah. match with those. I think it's just the interact with other people mm. it makes a massive difference to individuals yeah. you know uh, just chatting to them generally yeah. getting out of the house you know not sitting within four walls so yeah. and I think with our approach here I think you can just walk walk over step and I think that's a massive big issue for anybody just to actually walk in the door I yeah. think that's a huge step for individuals well, people, like, yeah. people have uh -huh. done that it's yeah. the first thing uh -huh. and if we you know if you're thinking about those two big areas that we've talked mm -hmm. about medication exercise and eating yeah uh, they're actually all doing the same mm -hmm. thing it's the it's the chemicals. It, it is mood. It's yeah. the chemicals yeah. in the brain. Yeah. Because that's what antidepressants do. Exactly. They release or replace the chemical that's missing. Yeah. But if you can get people to um, release that chemical Themselves. by eating the right foods, yeah. you know, and you know, the, you know, there, there are foods that help you remain calm and release this yeah. the endorphins in yeah. the brain. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, you know what I think about bananas. You know, the gift from the gods. Yeah, they are I've wonderful. Heard that. Yeah, potassium. You know, oh, absolutely. But potassium yeah. and the one of the best things for releasing the endorphins in the brain. Yeah. And, and helping you sleep. Yeah. Which is mm -hmm. weird, isn't it? Because bananas are incredibly difficult to digest. digest. <laughs> but if you can tolerate them, bananas will help yeah. you sleep, and you won't need alcohol, drugs, yeah. people resort to all sorts of things to do the same yeah. kind of thing in their brain. It, it, you know, I think what we want to do is to encourage people to speak to people like yourselves mm -hmm. who, you know, if you've had a sudden loss or you've got a situation to drop in to mm -hmm. places like yourselves yeah. and to say, I just need to talk to someone. I think, I think mental health has been down here. This, I think there have been the Cinderella, Yeah. Um, I have to say. I think it is improving. Yeah. I think it still needs to be up there though. It's one of those things, Doc, what I've found as well in my experience this year, these last few years, is just talking about it. Because I had a problem and I didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. and, and and there's such a, has been in the mm -hmm. past, I think, a stigma attached mm -hmm. to any mental health issue. It's just getting, just breaking through that barrier and talking about it, you know what I mean? I think it's just like the, get around the back of here, and then over. So they built that because the Scottish were wild and kind of hard. Yeah. Well, the Scottish were trying to come down to, to break into the Great North Swim when they've got their own swim, really, and they should just stay in Scotland, you know what I'm saying? Half a mile each way, so um, there's half a mile there and back. That's uh, his mile swim for the day. Just having a conversation, what's becoming more evident throughout the three mi 300 mile swim is that it's not about the, the mileage, like putting in the distance, it's everything that's surrounded with it. The positive mentality, the meeting new people, getting out into the outdoors and sampling, like all this kind of untouched amazingness that that can like totally set your day up we're just saying like in the past like you would have woke up on a sunday morning recovering from a hangover from the night before and like lost most of the day shopping in ikea buying loads of shit that you don't need for the house or you can come and do this hey hey which would you choose suppose ikea's got hot dogs like Final morning uh, of the 300 mile swim, and I headed down here last night. And um, we're here for about 11 o'clock. And Dave Young and his kids, and his wife, his father, are making their way down here this morning, together with um, uh, Davy Mack's sister and his family. So it's going to be quite an air. Uh, quite an emotional few day I think because it's the last 
like the last mile for Dave and um, and his way of sending off uh, to Davy Mac. Silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ding-a-ling, hear them ring. I'm about to be overtaken by Dick Dastardly and the Antil Mob. <laughs> I cannot let the Antil Mob beat me to Windermere. But there's not a lot I can do in a lilac Nissan Micra. Okay, great. Um, so I'm Rachel Taylor and I work on the events team with Amanda at Mind. Um, we're, we're based in London and our role is to fundraise through um, challenge events like swims, runs, treks um, and mine relies completely on voluntary funding so we receive no money from the government and um, so people like David who are doing these challenge events um, we wouldn't be able to continue our work without people like him so um, we um, are hoping to raise £30,000 through the Great North Swim um, from, this one from, this, from this one event. Um, so mental health is not something that people feel that they can freely talk about. Um, there's so many people that don't get the support they need because they're scared of what the stigma that's attached to these mental health problems. And as a fundraiser, it's really inspiring to and the, our supporters are fantastic they they're not only raising money they're raising important awareness their conditions yeah. statistically they, men don't go to the doctors to talk about problems when they're having mental health problems they tend to bottle it up a little bit and not want to talk through it and we've done a campaign a couple of years ago called men and mental health to to get the message out there that it's not just uh, men and women both get mental health problems and that men do need to see go to their doctors just as much as women need to go to the doctors and talk about what they're going through and try and seek the, the medical care that they, they can get really. It's an incredible challenge, 300 miles swimming is uh, a mind-boggling <laughs> mind miles to cover in, in the water so a massive well done to him. And, massive well done and, and, and thank you so much and to thanks everyone to all who supported supporters. him and Thanks to David for doing this. Yeah. Well done, David. Well done. <laughs> Final mile, mate. One mile ago. <laughs> and all the family. So, Vivian, have a great swim. I also want to mention a guy who's here. Where's Dave Young? Where's Dave Young? Over there. Okay. Dave, up the back. Think he looks tough. The reason that Dave is here at the British Gas Great North Swim is. He's coming to the end of his swim, okay? He's been raising money in memory of his friend Davy Mack and for the mental health charity at Mind. When I say he's coming to the end of his swim, this is the very last mile in Davy's 300 mile swim, which is awesome. You know, and he's, he's swam all over in all kinds of conditions, in all kinds of water. And we're absolutely thrilled, baby. This is going to be the last one for you. All the very best.
Toast us would be a bonnie de douche. Bonnie de douche. Shall I come? We needed people who knew what we were going to do. Somebody who knew sort of with them. We all we all just stuck together. To be honest, we all went through it together. Me and my mum and dad and John Sandra went as well, didn't he? Uh, once or twice to. Um, a SOBS group which was it's called Survivors of the Raven Flu Suicide and we found that really helpful because everybody that was there had suffered either one or, or more suicides in the family and they all knew what we were going through because the pain you get with that is you can't describe the pain, it's not a normal bereavement and you can't deal with it in the same way. I think you've I think you answered why though when you said that some people go through the whole life and don't put as it's much in as what, as what he did in bloody... Yes,
inside your mind all along I have cried silent tears full of pride in a world made of steel made of stone it's really odd that when we're pulled in here to comfort me the name of the taxi driver was stopped in the middle of the street was called Davy. And if I'm not mistaken, from this angle looking down at the town there, it's not in like this shit. Um, for me, it's a healing process and also to raise awareness of one single step and the motivational help and support that they can give to other people suffering from mental health problems and for me one personal achievement. I think it's something I would never have dreamed of doing if what had happened to our day yeah. hadn't happened. We'd, I wouldn't be here today doing this. Yeah, I, I, I have to say. You know, second yeah. that it's it, it, it is right. I mean, Dave's been inspirational, mm -hmm. and I, I think for me, 
I've always felt as if I needed to do something. Yes. Didn't know what, what I could do for some form of closure, uh, even though we'll never ever forget old David. No. We'll think about him every day. But for some form of closure to be able to do something to say, I've done this for old David, yeah. is why I'm here today. For me, this isn't really? the end. For me, this is the beginning. And I think it's him that's spurring us on yeah. at the minute, sort isn't of it? And yeah. I think he's Definitely. Having he's looking down on us now. Arrows. Yeah. Apprehensive, to be honest. I've never ever competed in anything in my life or done anything for charity or swam in a lake before. So for me, it's I'm the total opposite. I'll compete anything. <laughs> I want to just want to get in and just do it. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I, I kind of speak hardly enough with uh, of David. Um, what he's done. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, I think the biggest sort of impact for me uh, was when we had the premiere of the video of the yeah. 300 mile swim. Uh, and what impacted me most was when uh, oh. how, how, how David's death had actually affected David so much. Even though it affected all of, all of us, yeah. uh, and it affects people in different ways, we understand that. But the impact that it had on Dave and, and giving him the inspiration to do 300 miles was unbelievable. So we're here on the banks of Ullswater, and we're here to film Anne and Neil, uh, Davy Mac's sister and brother, who have trained for the last year, and they're now doing their um, one mile. That's all for a reason, you know, and, uh, and so on. I, I feel as if I've done something that I've wanted to do since old David died, and I feel as if I've fulfilled a, a, a personal sort of, a, well, a, a sort of an emptiness. Yes. Of, it's, it's, I think I felt very empty since old David died, and I feel as if now I've done something for him, and it's been for me. Fantastic. Can I, I can't thank this man no. enough. It's not here because he has been in Korea. Who wouldn't have done it? 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 I can't thank you. 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 I can't thank We met a little lad, a little baby at the 300 film premiere with Freddie, yeah. Davy Mack's little nephew. He's about one year old when we met him. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, bury in the lake um, a copy of the DVD. And we've got a message for little Freddie inside there from the old one. He's 21 years old. We're setting him a bit of a challenge.
So as Dave says, um, Davy Max nephew Freddy, this is a package for Freddy to not to be opened until the year 2032, another 20 years when Freddy is 21 years old. So we're going to bury it in the tarn and that's it. So I'm in now. I'm your trusty cameraman by the way. <laughs> If you look up the mountain, that's the party of people going up the mountain who we forgot to mention, who've all come to support uh, one single step. So Freddie, if you're watching or your family's watching, it's under this rock here mate. See you next year Dave! Yes, rather than generically hard shaped. Yes. Which meaning what in terms of bending? Really? And if you actually look, the heart shape is elongated, where the thinnest or the narrowest part of the heart, of course, are able to atria, and the more swollen section towards the distal part is our well, basically your two ventricles, your main pumping chambers, particularly the left sided. Hence, it sort of swells up like a boot almost. And there we have it, an anatomically shaped heart. So it's still quite hard shaped. Still quite hard shaped. Excellent. Good. Good. I'm glad to clarify that. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you. <laughs> I'm back in the studio. <laughs> Together 